Hey everyone, it's Lindsay here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to finish your B Quaker. Um, this pattern came in our Sip and Stitch box, and in your box, you will get the chart, the floss, the pom-pom, and your backing, and a piece of wool for the back. Um, so to start, we are going to mark a line all the way around our stitch, a half an inch away from your stitch line. And to do that and to make sure you have it straight, you're gonna use two lines. Whenever you can use two lines um, to line something up, you know you're gonna have a, a straight square line. So I'm lining up this bottom and then I'm lining up a half an inch from the last stitch. And then I'm using an air erasable fabric pen and I'm just making a nice line. And this is just gonna give us a guide. So now I'm gonna use the line I just created, line that up, line up my half an inch. I think half an inch is a, a a good amount because it gives you a little bit extra on the side, but it also gives you room for your palms. So this one is a little bit different. As you can see, like this, I have some space there, but I'm gonna line it up as best I can. That looks good to me. And then we'll just finish with this one. Okay, so once you have your lines, you're going to take it over to your machine. And I'm gonna have to scoot that over. I prefer to use a zipper foot when I am sewing my pom-pom on. So I'm just putting on my zipper foot here. I'm going to start at the bottom and grab my scissors here. You want to line up the edge of your palm so your palms are facing towards your stitch. You're gonna line it up um, with your line and then I'm gonna have to go in straight, sorry. <clears throat> you wanna move your needle over too. I just want to kind of see where I'm at here. I just have it sitting right on there and I'm going to move my needle over to the right. I'm going to put my needle down to see where I'm at to kind of anchor myself. I like to increase my stitch length. This will prevent bunching. So now you're just going to slowly go And I'm just barely tacking that down. And slow and steady, you don't need to go crazy. When you get to a corner, um, you're going to round your corner. So put your needle in the down position. You're gonna kind of pivot and you're going to kind of just round it off. And you're gonna do that with all four sides. Okay, so I've gone around all four corners and I'm ready to meet up. So I left a little bit of a tail and I'm kind of going to like put it off to the side and then line up my other side and I'm going to sew over the both of them where they are supposed to meet up. But you can see I've kind of made that so it goes off to the side. trim off this little tail here and I'm going to trim off this sorry can't, that little tail 
So, okay. So now we're gonna take this back over here. Oh, I guess I gotta trim off my thread. And the best thing to do and um, is mark your sew line so you can see it. Since I used white thread, this is the exact line you're gonna wanna sew on when you sew your backing on. And it's just, it doesn't, you don't have to do this like perfectly or anything. This is just to help me see where I need to sew. Since this is white, it's white on white. You're gonna lay your backing right side down. Or I mean, right side up, excuse me. And then your top right side down. And you can pin it into place if you'd like. Um, since it is a bigger piece, that's probably a good idea if you're not super comfortable with sewing. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this over. So if you wanna pin it, just pin it in the middle. Um, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with my sewing skills, but watch, it's gonna backfire. No, I'm just kidding. And I am going to sew right on that line that I just created. I'm gonna put my stitch length back where it should be. And I will back stitch because you're this is where you're enclosing it. So I'm just following that line. You can go slow around the corners. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around and then I've trimmed about three eighths to a half an inch, all the excess. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the two and you're going to make sure you only have the back so you're not cutting into your cross stitch. Snip it. Um, I don't like making a huge hole, just big enough to get the poly fill in and I kind of just, that might need to be a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna pull it the right side out. And this is where it's exciting because you get to see how cute it is. <laughs> Have this little um, turner thing and my goodness look how cute so you could um, give this a nice iron before you start filling it which I'm going to I don't like to iron directly onto my cross stitch so if you want to do the front put a piece of fabric down and then do it Okay, so now we have that. I'm going, since this is white cloth, I am going to use the poly pellets to fill this um, and then finish it with the poly fill. I really like the combination of both. Um, you can use a, what are those, a funnel if you need to. But these bags kind of come with a nice little nozzle. You can use as much as you want. I like to just make sure I've got a good... That they're in the corners. And it gives it a heaviness. So your pillow has stability. So now you're gonna take your polyfill 
and you want to separate your polyfill like this. This is so you don't get lumpies in your pillow. So I'm just gonna continue to do that and I'll show you guys when it's done.